She's known as the first lady of television. But Ruth Lyons' legacy goes beyond her iconic 50-50 club, which aired on WLWT for nearly 20 years. You know that we're finally here at the show. The Ruth Lyons Children's Fund has raised millions of dollars and makes staying in the hospital just a little brighter for sick children and their families. I had always thought that all of these things were really great, but when you're the recipient of them, it really makes this place feel more like home. Celebrating Ruth Lyons and how you can keep her legacy alive. From WLWT, this is Let's Talk Cincy, presented by Western and Southern Financial Group. Put our financial strength behind you. She was the epitome of the golden age of television. Before there was Oprah, there was Ruth Lyons here in Cincinnati. Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Talk Cincy. I'm Curtis Fuller. Ruth Lyons always wanted her television show to make a difference and have an impact on the community. Lacey Roberts looks at the rise to fame of Ruth Lyons and how her legacy will never be forgotten. She was known as the first lady of television, affectionately called mother. Ruth Lyons was more than an entertainer. You know that we're finally here at the show. And so we wave you a great big hello. Hello. Her story is legendary. Stand by. Hugh Orchestra. WLW Radio and WLW Color Television present Ruth Lyons and the fabulous 5050 Club. And now, here is the star of the 5050 Club show, in person, Ruth Lyons. The first woman to host a national daytime talk show in America. It's been said that she was so popular, tickets to her show were sent out three years in advance. People came from all over to see Ruth Lyons and the 5050 Club the highest rated daytime show in the nation. Let us entertain you. The biggest stars in the country, like Bob Hope, came to Cincinnati to visit the Ruth Lyons show. Today, Ruth Lyons' legacy lives on through a charity she started 82 years ago. In 1939, after visiting Cincinnati Children's Hospital during the Christmas season, she learned that there were no funds available to brighten the holidays for the hospitalized children. She asked her radio listeners at the time to send in their nickels and dimes for the children. That first year, she raised $1,000, and that was the beginning of the Ruth Lines Children's Fund, now helping children in Cincinnati and Dayton area hospitals. And I don't think there's a fund in the country that can say that. All in all, it is just mushrooms, you know, from a very small endeavor to uh, something that we just can't afford not to do. Since its inception, the fund has raised close to $23 million. In addition to Christmas celebrations, it provides a variety of unique services. Every child receives a gift of their very own to keep when they stay overnight at the hospital. Let us entertain you. Let me make you smile. In 1967, Overwhelmed by grief following the death of her 21-year-old daughter, Candy Newman, and battling her own health challenges, Lyons stepped away from television. Let me entertain you, and we'll have a real good time. Yes, sir! Lyons passed away in November 1988. She was 81, but her legacy will last forever. Lacey Roberts reporting for Let's Talk Cincy. Well, leaving a legacy of love and giving children who need it something to smile about. That is what a 95-year-old man who recently passed away wanted to do. He left behind a significant donation to the Ruth Lyons Children's Fund. Mike Dardis talked to the man's son about his dad's legacy of love. My dad was uh, a, an incredibly you know, warm person with his family. Dex Nordquist beams when he talks about his father. His dad, Ernie, lived a life full of love and loyalty before dying in May at the age of 95. And now, just months after his death, it's Ernie's legacy of giving that we're applauding. His estate making a huge donation to WLWT's Ruth Lyons Children's Fund, 
Of course, in true Nordquist fashion, the family doesn't want the dollar amount to be the focus, rather the message to others. Help if you can. Father's passion his whole life was children. It was an easy gift for him, and he started doing that, and it grew and grew and grew. And, uh, you know, during his lifetime, you know, he gave a tremendous amount of his uh, assets to children. Ernie was a Chicago guy, but after taking a job with Procter & Gamble, he moved to the Cincinnati area in 1954, and he spent the rest of his life here. Did I mention loyalty? 37 years at P&G, married to the love of his life for 62 years before she passed away in 2013. Oh, and loyalty to his country, too. Ernie was a military man in World War II, serving in the 71st Infantry, part of General Patton's Third Army. Dex believes that battle experience and the loss of young men around him who never made it back gave his dad that extra purpose to live for others and make the most of the time he had to make a difference. Uh, he was drafted, but then he talked with his other buddies and all of them joined and uh, several of them died during the, the conflict. And um, I think, you know, that really impacted him after the war. Dex says dad's in heaven. He thinks it's even possible Ruth Lyons now gets a chance to tell him thanks for helping all those kids. She loved children, my dad did too, and uh, there's no doubt that they're standing there. They're probably sitting there at the counter having a beer or something, I don't know. <laughs> what a great story, huh? Mr. Norquist told Mike, one of the things he cherishes most was meeting with his father once a week for lunch. He says he'll never forget the countless stories his father told him during those times. Well, up next, how your donations to the Ruth Lyons Children's Fund are making hard times just a little easier for sick children and their families when Let's Talk Cincy continues. Well, the Ruth Lyons Fund has been around for more than eight decades, as we said. It began as a way to bring holiday joy to children in the hospital, but it has turned into so much more. It's also helping hospitals all across greater Cincinnati, including one that specializes in saving the tiniest of lives. It's scary enough having a baby, but when your baby is sick or too small to come home, the fear and worry is haunting. Honestly, didn't think he was going to make it through it, but he did, and he's been fighting ever since. Jessica Francis' son, Alexander, has been in Good Samaritan's NICU for more than 100 days. It was really difficult. Lindsay Jarvis had her son, Michael, six weeks early. There was no rocking him to sleep at night or going into his room to make sure he was okay. I would say it felt like um, a piece of me was missing. That was eight months ago. Michael is home now and is a happy, healthy little boy. But these moms will never forget the things that got them through those dark days. The amazing NICU nurses and the gifts from a woman they never met. I've witnessed tears before. They're very sometimes taken back by such a generous thing because it's so there's so much time and effort put into making these. Every baby in Good Sam's NICU gets a handmade quilt. No two are alike. The fabric comes from the Ruth Lyons Children's Fund. The babies each get a snuggly Ruth Lyons sleep sack. Moms are given books and a journal to document every heart-pounding moment. And with each milestone, the moms are given custom, handmade glass beads as a way for them to remember their baby's journey. All of this part of a legacy that started with a TV legend 82 years ago. Such a worthwhile thing and it has done so much and meant so much to so many hospitals and sick children. I had always thought that all of these things were really great. 
but when you're the recipient of them, it really makes this place feel more like home. The NICU is an emotional place, even when 100 days later, it's finally time to go home. He's able to meet his brother and sister, and they're like so excited. But sometimes the smallest things can make the biggest difference. Her legacy is, is living on, and it's living on in a way that provides families a home away from home. More than three decades after her death, Ruth Lyons continues taking care of Cincinnati's children. And of course, that was Cherie Palello reporting for us. Well, just ahead on Let's Talk Cincy, taking you behind the scenes of the great 50-50 club and what made Ruth Lyons so popular. With WLW's four TV stations, Ruth Lyons could be heard and seen by millions of Midwestern housewives every day. At first, it was a challenge she looked forward to. Well, you know, I've been talking about television. We're gonna, we're gonna have television here, you know. As soon as Arthur gets his face lifted, we're gonna start. <laughs> Arthur. And um, I, I said how we'd have to be so careful. We can't have our slip. Sit down, Arthur. I'm not talking to you. We, we can't have our slip showing, and we can't have runs in our stockings or anything, you know. You gotta look your best. Well, with elegance, grace, and humor, Ruth Lyons was indeed the first lady of television. You know, an award-winning documentary about the life of Ruth Lyons captures the essence of this legendary broadcaster. However, it was no easy task. The producers told me it was a challenge making this documentary, but as you will see, their labor of love paid off in more ways than one. Uh, when Mark and I were convinced that we could do this, despite all the, uh, uh, all the obstacles he, he described, uh, we went out and we found a couple of angels that provided the production funding. And those angels were John Morrell Meats, and oddly enough, former WLWT anchor Jerry Springer. They provided the funding. And as a result of that generosity, we finished the production with, with really no bills to pay. So we really got excited when Pat Barry came up with the idea uh, and worked out a deal with UDF, who agreed to sell the program as a, DD, uh, as a DVD in more than 150 stores. You know, we sold a few of them online, but the vast majority were sold retail through UDF stores throughout greater Cincinnati. Uh, in all, I think we sold more than 7,000 copies and UDF agreed to handle retail sales and accounting. And then they donated every proceed to the fund. And in total, after we sold all those copies, we raised $134,000 for the Ruth Lyons Children's Fund. We were very pleased with that. Did you get your last note just a little up? Kind of the famous, for the famous the 50 Club is on the air. We've talked about how someone like this will not, it, will, it won't happen again. A Ruth Lyons will never happen again. Oprah is, is a good example. I mean, Phil Donahue, good examples. But it won't happen again. I think the landscape has changed so much. Uh, the media, we have so many options to choose from. Uh, we have internet, we have all these various streaming services. I don't think you'll ever have an Oprah, much less a Ruth Lyons, again, somebody who can bring to the table so many people. And also, we're so obsessed with demographics right now. If you look at those studio shots when they do the waving song or if Ruth is talking to someone in the audience, you will see that Ruth Lyons had elderly women, she had young housewives, everything in between. Uh, we don't work in the business that way, just looking for the biggest tent possible. We now appeal to very specific niches. So I don't think you'll see somebody with the sort of broadband, wide gauge appeal that she had. And then too, she was in the right place at the right time. The medium was still young. You only had, what, three options, <laughs> right? You had the three VHF stations and that was it. And, you know, if you weren't watching Ruth Lyons, the competition had a B-grade movie on opposite you. They didn't even try after a point to put anything on of substance because when we went to visit David Letterman, and he's a very 
ratings number broadcast oriented man. And he wanted to know what the share was. And I showed him one of the old WLW research sheets. And he went, my God, those are Super Bowl numbers. And with the 50-50 club, in terms of audience perception, it was a Super Bowl day, five days a week. You'll never see that again. Another person who has an interesting perspective about the life and career of Ruth Lyons is longtime Cincinnati media critic John Keyswater. I sat down with him and talked about his personal and professional reflections about the first lady of television. The name Ruth Lyons, what comes to mind? Uh, what comes to mind is when I was about uh, 13 years old in Middletown Hospital with, with pneumonia. And every day a, a push cart came in with models and coloring books and, and uh, puzzles and books from the Ruth Lyons Children's Christmas Fund. And at that point in the mid-60s, while she was still on the air, um, they gave you a toy a day. It wasn't just a toy or a stuffed animal when you check in or leave. And so that, you know, with a, with a young boy in the hospital, you know, away from his family and, and uh, kind of bored. And, and so it was wonderful that they brought the cart in each day and I, you know, got a ship to build or an airplane or a coloring book or, or whatever. So that, that's the first thing I think of. The second thing is just the, her amazing legacy that after all these years, that the fund is still alive and well, and it's still, and she's still, in her name, impacting sick kids who are hospitalized and trying to make their, their existence, their life in the hospital a little bit happier, a little bit better. I would imagine you're like me. There are a few people you wish you had met, interviewed. She's one of those people. So I don't tell this to many people, but I, I became very good friends with her husband. And uh, we ex would exchange phone calls or, or, or letters and all. And uh, once I was out to, to uh, lunch with him, and he said, do you want to come in and meet Ruth? And I said, no, I had to get back to work. But I wanted to remember her from, from watching her on TV. I didn't want to have the image of, of a woman who had had multiple stro strokes and was bedridden and, and quite frail. And um, you know, I, I, I haven't regretted that, res that that decision because I have these wonderful memories, particularly gr growing up in Middletown as I did in the 1960s, it was a who's who of show business. I mean, if, if, a, ba if a band was coming to the Beverly Hills or a comedian, or if somebody was playing the Kenley Players in Dayton, they came to Ruth uh, and the 50-50 Club. In researching stories about her, Peter, Paul, and Mary came on Ruth Lyons when they were only together as a group in their first year. Uh, George Carlin was on as, as a clean-shaven comic in the early 60s, Bob Newhart. And then they, these titans of show business like, like uh, Bob Hope or Duke Ellington or, or uh, Count Basie, some of the great band leaders. How successful do you think she would be in this era of television and, and social media? Do you think she would still have the same impact I guess my gut instinct would be yes, although it's a totally different world because she was hugely popular, had like a three or four year wait for people to get a ticket, a free ticket to get to sit in her audience. I think she would be respected for taking a stand on, on social justice issues and race issues as she did in the 50s, early 60s. Uh, but I think, you know, that, that she'd have probably two or three savvy young people who would be, be doing her Instagram and doing her Facebook and doing her, her uh, Twitter. She was a smart business. She was the first female program director at, at WLWT, at Channel 5, in addition to hosting the most popular show. When Let's Talk Sensi returns, hear from mothers and nurses on the impact the Ruth Lyons Children's Fund is having on them. Of course, we always want to hear from you. Email us your ideas 
at LTC at WLWT.com. Remember, you can always watch full episodes or get more information on WLWT.com slash Let's Talk Cincy. You can also listen to Let's Talk on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Finally, today, the Roof Lions Children's Fund has raised millions of dollars, as we've told you, to buy medical equipment and gifts for children in area hospitals. During the holiday season, it brings a sense of normalcy to an otherwise very stressful time. In this case, a little Halloween dress up to lift the spirits of families. Here's Ashley Kirkland. This bumblebee was all a buzz to signify it was indeed feeding time during our visit. In other parts of the neonatal intensive care unit at Good Sam, you never knew just who you may run into. Look at those little fridges up there. There we go. <laughs> this little astronaut was all dressed and ready to join the race to space. A knight in shining armor here to save the day. And this rock star was getting her beauty rest. And the only thing this little pirate stole was our hearts. It's the best time of year. Um, it's so fun because now it's something that the kiddos aren't necessarily missing out on. NICU nurses say this gift helps to normalize things for families going through a very difficult time. I've had nieces that were in the NICU and I just remember my brother-in-law and sister-in-law both just saying how loved and supported they felt throughout their entire stay. For mom Courtney Foster, it was a bright light in the day. Chicken. Oh my goodness, I sent it to my family already and everyone was like, oh my God, he's a cute little, we call him the cutosaurus just because, yeah, he's just so cute and filled it out and it, it just makes the memory just that much easier. Her seven week old son, Terrell, was born at 23 weeks, just one pound, five ounces. Now he's celebrating a milestone. He finally got three pounds yesterday, so they knew like, okay, he can be okay and tolerate his costume. The costume donations from the Ruth Lyons Children's Fund were not only a gift for new precious memories. I've been crying tears of like happiness all since he put it on. It was a gift of joy. And you know, Ruth Lyons was a gift to us. It's hard to believe that she's been gone for now more than 30 years and away from television for over 50 years. But she really was an amazing personality. But most importantly, she was an amazing person and that legacy lives on. I've been here at WLWT for more than 30 years now. And what a pleasure, what a privilege it is to be a part of the Ruth Lyons legacy. Well, that does it for the program today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Curtis Fuller. We'll see you again next week.